Hello, and welcome to AWS Analytics Learning Series. My name is Harsha Tariparthi, and I am a specialist senior solutions architect covering analytics at Amazon Web Services. Today, you are going to learn what IAA, IAM allowed principles is in Lake Formation, why do you need it, and how do you use it? To help you better understand what IAM allowed principles is, let me take you back in time a little more than a year ago when lake formation did not exist. It is the time when Glue customers used Glue data catalog settings, which is powered by IAM-based policies to manage permissions to their data. Don't worry if you do not fully understand what Glue data catalog settings are. I'm going to walk you through that a little bit more in detail in an upcoming demo. But for those of you who are not familiar with AWS Glue, it is a fully managed serverless ETL service that offers a central data catalog, which is a high Metastore compatible catalog that helps you crawl any supported data sources and populate your data catalog. And it also allows you to author and executing Python shell and Spark jobs using a serverless execution framework and finally, helps you orchestrate, orchestrate those jobs by creating job workflows and allows you to monitor those jobs in the workflow using a graphical interface. So with that, let me show you how customers manage Glue permissions using IA, IAM-based policies prior to late formation. So for that, I'm going to switch my screen to a browser. And here, I've only, I'm already logged in to my AWS console as Hersha2 that you can see here, where my cursor is. And, um, um, and let me switch to the screen where Glue is uh, already opened up. And here, let's take a quick look at the databases we have in the catalog. So this Glue catalog has these set of databases. And for the purposes of, de of this demo, we're going to look at TPCDS database. And for those of you who are not familiar with TPCDS, it is an industry standard data set, a uh, public data set for decision support systems. So we'll take a quick peek at the tables we have in this database. And uh, now let's take a quick scenario. We have an analyst uh, named Analyst1. And uh, let's say you want to give this analyst uh, access to one of these tables here. Let's call it the customer address table. Uh, and in order for, for you to do that, you would typically click on the settings uh, on the left-hand pane uh, to go to the data catalog settings and define an IAM policy that allows this, this analyst one access to that table. So, so this is the IAM policy uh, that's, that we've created to allow. Uh, who's the principle that we are allowing? We give an ARN, which is an IAM ARN for this analyst one. And then we define an action. Um, get table is what's important for this use case because it's one table that we're interested in, but you can also add additional tables, databases, or a uh, single database or multiple databases. And then the resource, which is an ARN for the table that we'd like to give access to. You can use a simply, simple uh, comma separated set uh, if you have multiple tables, uh, if you'd like to give access to. So now I hit save and um, Let's quickly switch the browser screen to experience how Analyst1 would, would, would be able to access this table. So for this, I will, I've already logged in as Analyst1. Uh, let me just refresh uh, this screen, just to make sure it's, yeah. Um, so I'm going to log in as Analyst1. And I'm going to use Amazon Athena to access the uh, table or query the table. And for those of you who are not familiar with Amazon Athena, it is a fully serverless ad hoc query interactive querying engine, which is based off Apache Presto. And uh, you would typically use Athena to query your data in S3 data lake using the AWS Glue catalog. That's basically how you use it. So here I've selected my database, which is the TPCD S3 terabyte. And I'm just going to run this query just to make sure I can read this data that has been given access to. And there you go. Now we're able to see the data. So let's quickly switch back to the 
uh, slides where uh, let's see when lake formation got introduced, how did it change the way customers manage permissions? So for those of you new to lake formation, it is a data lake service that makes it easy to ingest your data using blueprints, discover and search metadata and secure data access to your data. Lake formation uses the AWS Glue Data Catalog to store metadata about data lakes, data sources, transforms, and targets. When existing Glue customers started to use lake formation, we had to create a way to ensure there is a backward compatibility to existing Glue catalog, catalog objects that were already protected by the Glue catalog's IAM-based policies that we have seen in the earlier demo. If that backward compatibility did not exist, it would break the Glue IAM permissions when Lake Formation got introduced. And that's exactly why we introduced IAM allowed principles to provide that backward compatibility. And enabled it by default on all your Glue tables so nothing breaks. So let's take a deeper look at IAM allowed principles in the next demo and see what I just mentioned uh, to, to experience that uh, backward compatibility. So for that, I'm gonna switch my screen again back to the browser, and I'm gonna click on the tab where I have already logged in as uh, Arsha2 and um, opened the AWS Lake Formation screen. And uh, under the databases, you, will, you still see the same Glue catalog because uh, Lake Formation uses the same Glue catalog. So I click on the database and hit view tables. So here I have, let's, let's locate the table customer address, which is right here. And let's take a quick look at the view permissions. So here we have a few set of permissions and more importantly, we see the IA, IAM allowed principles, which is already present when lake formation is uh, started in this account. So we'll park, we'll park uh, the conversation around the backward compatibility and let's go ahead and first quickly talk about a scenario where you have, let's extend the previous scenario where the analyst one who, who already has access to this table the customer address table. Let's say you have a new requirement to say, this analyst should only see two of the columns available in that table, not all. So a nice thing about lake formation is it supports fine grain access control to help you uh, configure only selective columns. So let's go ahead and give that grant. And let's select the analyst one user and the database, which is the TPCDS, and uh, the table, which is the customer address table, and then select the columns that we want to include. So I want to include the add ID column and then the city. That's all I want to give access to this uh, analyst. And I would give a select. Super would give access to the rest of the um, you know, permissions, which I do not want for this demo, and then I'm gonna hit grant. So now let's switch back to the browser to experience what an analyst one would experience when accessing this data. So I can, I can quickly rerun this query so that we'll, we'll run, Athena runs it against the table. And now you can see it did not give access to just the two tables like we thought, it actually allowed the entire result. In, in other words, nothing has changed, nothing truly had changed that, uh, compared to what was before configuring lake formation. And, and the reason why we see that is because of this IA, IA ML out principles. So it, it is basically overriding what lake formation's principles are. So you cannot deny access or, or make any fine grain access controls uh, using lake formation because IAM, which you configured using glue catalog settings, has taken precedence. So in order for you to um, you know, uh, revoke that, or in other words, if, when you're ready to migrate uh, all your catalog tables to lake formation and let lake formation take ownership, then you go to every table and you basically revoke this super setting, um, which means remote revoke managing any 
permissions on this and simply hit revoke. And now you see there is no more uh, that IML or principles here. And let's switch back to our screen well, as analyst one and then rerun this query one more time. And there you go. Now you see only the two columns that we wanted to give access to. So this would work if you wanted to deny access or uh, just, just making sure lake formation takes full control, then, then we, we essentially ensure that you remove that IML or principle and, and let uh, lake formation take control. So um, it, what's important to note is for customers, who complete all, migrating all of the tables and no more require any new tables or, or no more require management of the um, permissions through the IAM, then you go in to this settings tab and you simply uncheck these two boxes which then would ensure no new tables or no new, data, no new databases will have that IAM allow principles uh, permissions by default created. Uh, so that you can simply continue to manage everything through late formation and you hit save. And, and that basically um, is what I wanted to walk you through quickly. So let's summarize what we've learned today. So we've learned what IAM allowed principles is, how did, and you learned how customers managed Glue catalog permissions prior to lake formations using IAM permissions. And then you also seen how IAM allowed principles provided that backward compatibility to ensure nothing is broken when lake formation was introduced. Uh, and, and you also learn how lake formation uh, is, is able to manage permissions for glue object objects when you remove the IAM allowed principles permissions from the table objects. So that's essentially what we want to ensure you had a full understanding of IML out principles. So thank you uh, once again. Um, looking forward to to help you learn uh, additional glue and analytic services uh, um, features in the next video. Thank you.